that doesn't say anything. But I train them. Happy birthday to you. And use their hands and their eyes. And then I put the birthday person on the chair. And they're all looking up and reminding them what a birthday really is. And that if, if the person whose birthday it is understands that if she has a fantastic life, thousands of people will be affected. And then the singers in the audience, who maybe 1,500 people or 2,000 people, they're singing. Well, suddenly it transforms that song from a routine, mindless song, mm -hmm. to something which they never forget. Is that related? Do you bring in the one buttock um, playing well, into the that one exercise? Well, the one buttock. I'm curious that yeah. the person, the, the gentleman who I think told you he was going to transform his company yes. from one buttock. Yes, he had the brilliant company, what he idea. Did. Well, what happened was, I was teaching a, a young pianist in one of these events because I bring music into the business world and there was a young man playing the piano and he was doing well but it was stuck, and it was, you know, up and down and I said half jokingly the trouble with you is you're a two buttock player instead of a one buttock and I pushed his body while he was playing and if you've ever seen one of the great musicians, you know, Jack Lee to play, or Yo-Yo Ma, this is all from side to side. But this, he's not thinking of the notes this way, he's thinking of it that way. And so he's launching a phrase from the beginning to the end. And that is a whole different way of breathing and thinking and relating and creating and so on. So when I did that to him, his playing suddenly took off, you know, and said, oh, wow, that's amazing. And so then I got this amusing letter from this gentleman who was the CEO of the company. He said, I went back, I told the old guy, transformed the entire company into a one butter company. <laughs> that's great. I have no idea what he said, but the thing is, what he got was he was leading the company in terms of blocks. You do this, and then you do that, you do that, you do that. That, you do that. Everything was stuck. What music teaches us is that there are no bar lines. You know, Leon Fleischer is a great uh, American pianist, one of the greatest ever. And he said, classical music is an act of anti-gravity. It's a beautiful idea that, that most things pull us down, and including most pop music. It's all about the beat, and the, you know, which is very useful to get kids out of puberty in one piece. But classical music lifts our spirit to a place that we can't reach otherwise. Mm. It's a beautiful thing. Mozart, I watched the film Amadeus yesterday. Oh, tears streaming down my face. I mean, just the idea that somebody can create that kind of music that can lift people's spirit instantaneously. Just seconds of music. Very few things can do that. And so the idea that we could emulate the shape and direction of music. So, so um, of course, your interpretation classes are That's seen now by millions yeah. thanks to the internet. So you're um, so well known for your interpretations of Mahler and Beethoven. Um, can you share with us a little bit about like the possibility, when you think about Beethoven, how he's a really good example of um, being able to use a concept of possibilities. I don't think he would have thought that way. He was just creating music. Yeah. Because music in itself explains itself. It isn't about anything else, except in very rare cases. Like he wrote the Pastoral Symphony, and that's a 